It's arguably one of the grandest and most luxurious trains in the world, but for more than half a decade it's been sitting in a railway shed west of Brisbane. Although the Great South Pacific Express was hailed as a tourist drawcard when it was launched in 1999, it was shut down four years later and sold to an overseas company, and the new owner hasn't decided what to do with it. A former head of Queensland Rail sees this as an opportunity lost at a time when Australia's domestic tourism industry urgently needs a boost. Peter McCutcheon reports from Ipswich in southeast Queensland. More than a hundred years of railway history is on display at Ipswich, west of Brisbane. Members of the public can take a behind-the-scenes tour of Queensland Rail's 19th century workshops. That's a serious drill. What do you use that for? A large hole. <laughs> <laughs> but visitors aren't told that at the back of these sheds, strictly off-limits to the public, is a collection of some of the most luxurious train carriages in the world. So what's down the very end there? Uh, that's just the doorway. No, but the, the train at the very end. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and no, we, no, you can't no. get any closer? No, 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 thank you. I'll yeah. be told not to take it, if you don't mind, thanks. Why the carriages have been left here gathering dust for more than half a decade has been something of a mystery. I can understand why there is surprise. It is a great train. Uh, it's a shame nobody's using it. The luxury carriages were once part of a bold and ambitious enterprise known as the Great South Pacific Express, running from Sydney to Cairns. It's fairly obvious what they were trying to do, and that was boost the tourism industry, uh, not only in Queensland, because the trip started down in New South Wales, uh, but also in uh, making sure that there was a rail product that was attractive to the world. 21 carriages, including state-of-the-art kitchen and dining cars, were built in Townsville in the 1990s at a cost of around $35 million. The chief executive of Queensland Rail at the time was Vince O'Rourke. It is the grandest luxury train in the world. There's no question about that. In the world? In the world. It's a big statement, but it is a grand train. The whole train was built with this lantern style with lead light, uh, lead light roofing. The closest the 7.30 report can get to examining the Express up close is to study these scaled models presented to Vince O'Rourke on his retirement. You can take the lid off and it has two compartments, absolute luxury, beautiful appointed, uh, you know, double bed suite, en suite, all of that. It's quite a way to travel. Yeah, well, you travel in style. ABC TV captured some of that style in a 1999 documentary. Luxury train travel is the mixture of fine food, fine service, all served in this cocoon of this wonderful piece of theatre. I mean, it's like a stage set. But despite initial success, the show lost nearly $12 million over four years, and the curtain came down in 2003. The recent tragedy in Bali and the current war in Iraq has had a significant impact on demand for this luxury service, particularly in the important North American and Japanese markets. The planets aligned to uh, basically conspire against the Great South Pacific Express that was actually a fabulous product, uh, but on the numbers of poor business. Five years ago, Queensland Rail announced it had sold the luxury carriages to its original partner in the venture, the Orient Express Hotel Company. Now, a sales price was never officially disclosed, and the carriages disappeared off the public stage. Why, then, are they still here in this 100-year-old shed in Ipswich? We thought, when we were selling it, that it would be taken to be used, and so 20 of the carriages that exist still sit out at the Ipswich workshops, and... I believe, personally, I think it's a shame that it's not in use somewhere in the world. Paul Scurra is the current chief executive of Queensland Rail. He explains the Orient Express Hotel Company has paid $7.5 million for the carriages, but still has one last instalment of $500,000 outstanding. And until this is settled, Queensland Rail still technically holds title to the train, although it can't do anything with it. 
Why weren't the details of this transaction made public in 2005? Was it because Queensland Rail had lost so much money on it it didn't really want to draw attention to the fact? I don't think it's been kept a secret at all. The records show uh, in the Queensland Rail annual report that there was uh, property disposals. Um, it was part of a bigger suite of property disposals. It appears the company has no immediate plans for the carriages. Its 2005 annual report mentions shifting them to either Europe or possibly Peru. The company has moved one carriage to southern Italy and has told the 7.30 report it pays rent for the storage and still plans to complete the transaction. My understanding was that it was going to go to Italy, but I certainly didn't think it would be sitting out in the uh, Ipswich shops, you know, six, seven years later. We've got one of the greatest tourism products in the country that's sitting in, a, in an Ipswich workshop. 12 o'clock sustain, yes, yes. Most visitors to the Ipswich workshops would be unaware they're only 100 metres away from the luxurious but elusive Great South Pacific Express. The ultra-luxury carriages are no longer a burden on the taxpayer. In fact, their five-year stay here has generated more than $400,000 in rent. But what was once the pride of Queensland Rail remains hidden away to all but the most observant. Why do you think it matters what happens to this train? Well, it matters a lot. The train was a tourism icon. Uh, when this train was launched, there was nothing like it in Australia and in the world. It was a beautiful train, uh, well patronised in those early years, and it's just a shame that it hasn't had a chance to, uh, to have another go. Train, train. Peter McCutcheon reporting from Ipswich.